That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Commenter. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. Go ahead, hit subscribe right down there in the corner. Click the little bell. Get notified whenever we have a new interview. We drop one every single weekday. So make sure you check out some authors, filmmakers, artists, musicians, creators of all kinds. And uh, we look forward to every interview we do. We love what we do. We are here hanging with author Melissa Bonsack. That's close enough. It's <coughs> baby. As far as you know, I'm telling the truth. You check the spelling, you tell me. <laughs> Leave a comment. You tell me what you think. Uh, and Melissa is the author of How to Sex Your Snake. And that is not a sentence that you can Google on the internet very often. You will get results that do not bring you to the Hanging With Web Show. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so this is action. This it's is an action adventure. An action adventure. Action adventure. I write for women, twenties to actually. I have, I have I have people even older than that. Except my mother. Don't tell my family members. My mother. My mother did not like the book. Yeah, I, she's eighty-eight. Uh, but so that's my one. Yeah, that's person all like artists. It. Though all artists have that thing, you know. Uh, yeah. With, I saw a, a great plaque on the wall one day that said, "Don't." tell my mom I'm an artist she thinks I play the piano at a brothel <laughs> yeah so, but, I, but I've had male women write to me and say my husband picked up the book and started reading it and I think I hadn't imagined that that men would be the audience but June Nash is my heroine and I'm writing a whole series of books with her June Nash June Nash okay. and her brother is Dewey Nash and he is a world famous herpetologist and he has a show he's like the Jeff Corwin in this world here. okay so if you know who Jeff Corwin is so he's got a he's got a TV show where he takes people all around the world and talks about reptiles and the show is called gone herpin so and if you if you're a, a snake person out there again um, don't google that yeah <laughs> just saying yeah so he takes people all around the world on his TV show so he's world famous so his fans do not like June because she's his personal assistant and she keeps the fans away from her brother so they don't like her so uh, her brother, though, gets accused of murder. Now, no one knows about this shit except the sheriff in the little town where they live. See, my sister does that for me. <laughs> she Only she, is a, she <laughs> also hosts the show. And ah. wherever she is, no one comes near me. Yeah. <laughs> so you know exactly, so I know exactly how that goes. Yeah. So he's accused of murder. But the sheriff, and June says, oh my God, you can't tell anybody because if his, if his company finds out, he may get fired. Once people are in the handcuffs, that's all they see. They're not. He could be cleared later, and oh my God, there could be all kinds of problems. Absolutely, so don't say absolutely. anything. Yep. So the sheriff agrees to keep it hush for 48 hours. Well, June is going about her business, and there's a big reptile show convention that weekend. So she's good. You got to have him back by three o'clock on Sunday, because that's when everybody's going to be expecting him to be okay. talking. So she's at the place trying to keep things normal and not let anybody know what's going on. She stumbles on a clue to clear her brother's name. Follow the clue. Make a phone call. It's a split second decision and she follows the clue. So now she's trapped on this weekend from hell with her arch nemesis trying to clear her brother of murder. And she's got 48 hours to get the clue back. Wow. There's a lot going on. So we're, we're <laughs> going we're, we're to start with a uh, reptile convention. Yeah, it might. Have you might. like been to one of those? Is that like, yes, is, that, is yes, this, a, is this used, a thing? I used to sell snakes. This is a so thing. You sell snakes. Thing. And yeah, there's a there's, there's a like a snake huge, huge convention. There's conventions everywhere. Yeah, it used to be like every weekend there was a reptile like convention. Every. Yeah, you can find one all over the place. So my husband loves snakes. So he okay. has at one point, he says, "Oh, I have like 20." And in the book, I say, "My husband had 20 snakes." He was gone for a year. He used to be in the Air Force, and so he was stationed with NATO for a year. So I took care of his snakes. He had, between snakes and babies, he had 100. So it would take me all day Saturday to feed the this snakes. This is like Indiana Jones's nightmare. Yes, yes. So we had a wow. huge room in, in the house that had all the snake cages, and all the babies were their little containers, and there was charts I had to fill out of who ate what, and I had to hold the snakes and get the so babies. So kind of who ate who? 
Yeah, I had to hold the snakes and get the babies used, and I would let them chew on my my hand here to get them used to being held. Uh huh. So all these snakes. So one day, my daughter had a huge snake. It was about nine feet boa. It was about this thick around, and she would put the snake in the bathroom and let the snake take a shower. They turned the shower on. The snake, when she was done with the shower, she would the way she climbed out. She would she would wrap around the the thingy and turn the water off. So one day she climbed out and she was hanging on the light fixture. The door was closed and I forgot that she was in there. And I opened the door and I stepped in and there's this snake face hanging right in front of mine. And she was a big snake. And I'm looking at the snake face going, oh no. So I'm backing up slowly to get out. So that happened. And then I thought, you know. If there were a hundred <coughs> snakes in my house, I would move. <laughs> I. Wow. There, you know, they were, I only had to go in there every Saturday. So that wasn't bad. And keep the dog. We had a little terrier that we nicknamed Snack Food because she really liked the big snake. And she would go sit and look at the snake's cage. And I said to him, one day, the snake my, is going to eat the dog. And, my, my, my son and his uh, fiance have <coughs> a, a small uh, puggle, they call it, one of the designer dogs. And, and they, named, they named it Mushu. Oh, I love that. And apparently it was named after the character the dragon yeah, in yeah. Mulan. I, saw, I heard it, the first thing I thought was Chinese food. Yeah, you would think that. That's yeah. what I said. I said, you named your dog Chinese food. How ironic. Um, <laughs> but you actually, she went to the <coughs> next level. It was, it was snack food. So Literally that snack food. Yeah. So you and had so that. I decided that I was going to write. And I used to be a screenwriter. And it's, it's just, you can't sell. You can't, it's too hard unless you really know somebody. So, I mean, I knew a few people in the business because I was eons and eons and eons ago. I worked as a literary agent for a very short amount of time. Wow. Did not like doing it because I would cry every time we were rejected by anything. <laughs> it was very it was very upsetting. So, so you became the author? So I, You know, we you cry know, more. I, I did so much <laughs> editing and working on books that my husband said, well, why don't you just write one? So I thought, well, okay. So I, I, we did some screen stuff and made some small films and I have some things out there. And we actually had, I got to make a pilot. I had a... a a producer who did uh, reality shows oh, called wow. me and I did a sci-fi pilot for him, which didn't sell. But it was fun to do. Uh, so then I said, well, I'm going to write a book. And of course, that stupid snake thing would being, I said, okay, I'm going to do something with snakes. And by the end of the year, I hated my husband. I hated his snakes. I hated everything about the snakes. And I thought, what would happen if I was stuck around snakes all the time? And then I got to thinking, and we watch Jeff Corwin all the time. I love Jeff Corwin's show. Hey, and I wow. got to thinking, well, you know, if I combine all those things, and then I've got this poor heroine, June Nash, who just everything goes wrong all the time. We have it in audiobook also, so, you know, you can listen on the audiobook version. Yeah. And the girl did a great job, and she captured June sarcastic. I really want to be anywhere but here. That's fantastic. Feel. Well, we're so. going to share those links down below for the audio book, for the book, so people can find them oh, online. Oh, yes, on Amazon, um, Kobo, Barnes & Noble. You, you, now, this is, uh, you said you're planning a series of yeah. June Nash this was out. I've got uh, How to Sex Your Snake. The next book is How to Square Your Grouper. I'm almost done with that. And then after that is How to Be Your Lizard or Dragon. I haven't decided which one to go with. She's got like a book at home <clears> of all the double entendres <laughs> that she can find. I, oh, and then there's a freebie online called How to Bungle Your Jungle. And it's uh, 3,000 words, and it's free on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, didn't, I walked into that. I didn't see that coming <laughs> at all. Uh, wow. So, and now, so you had, there, there are, uh, there's a freebie <laughs> online. There's this one. There's another So one. there's just this one out and the short story. And, and I'm short still story. working okay. on how to, I wanted to have out, uh, how, to, how to square your grouper done for today. But I just didn't have it done, and I, I'm not going to rush it. But no, she, she no, goes, yeah. June goes to Key West and accidentally becomes a drug runner. So accidentally becomes a drug runner. Absolutely. Runner. As accidentally. one yeah. does. Yeah. At, uh, at times, <laughs> these things, they happen. Um, you had an interesting journey to coming to writing. Yeah. So um, from screenwriting um, to what was the biggest uh, distinction for you? from taking your screenwriting experience into novelizing? What was the biggest thing that stood out as, wow, this is... The hardest thing, I have so much respect for writers who write novels, because as a screenwriter, I only write dialogue. I'm good at dialogue. And I did a lot of ghostwriting, too, of helping people with screenplays. Mm -hmm. But now I've suddenly got a book, and I've got to write 
what people look like and what they're thinking and, every and time describing I, I, things. My which, first fiction novel, um, is I wrote a screenplay, and then uh, as I, 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 it's, it's actually currently with a, a filmmaker out in L.A., and so I called and I said, look, I'm, I want to novelize this. My, my marketing plan is I'll novelize it, you'll make the movie, yeah. and we'll, that's how we'll do that. And um, I sat down with my screenplay, and my first thought was, no worries. I've already done the bulk of the writing. That was the last time I ever thought that sentence because I found out that what I had done with, you know, small set descriptions now had to be elaborated on. Exactly. You know, to, so what was less than a full paragraph became half a chapter. Yeah. Because there was so much going on and I thought, well, if I was moving the camera, what would it see? Yeah, and that's a good way to do it. Yeah. What am I looking at? So when I'm writing, I have I used to be written down when I had an office for my character. What does she see? How does she feel about it? What's she gonna do about it? And then I go through and my and my editor always calls it juning. The last thing I do is add in how she reacts to stuff. Yeah. And so uh, what uh, what uh, again <laughs> coming from writing dialogue and very very antiseptic third person descriptions yeah, uh, to filling that out with exposition yeah um, what person do you prefer to write in do you write in first person do you write in third person this is in first person okay. and i'm writing another or i have a screenplay that we was produced and i thought well you know it was a good story it was fun i'll just go ahead and write it as a book and i already wrote the story i know what's going to happen it's going to be so we are easy to so do. wrong when we so say that easy. by the way yeah so i sat down and i'm like what? Okay, it's called Four Bullets and a Ghost. So it's a it's a uh, private detective whose partner's murdered in front of her. He shows back up. She goes to his funeral. She's sitting in his car, and he leans in from the back. She's like, I can't go in. And he leans in from the back seat. And he goes, I can't go either. And she says, Jack, you're dead. Okay. And he said, he said, doesn't mean we can't talk. And she said, I thought it did. <laughs> so really, so, can you? That yeah, so get he right keeps showing there. up and wanting her to solve crimes for people who are dead and she's not getting paid. So she's got all these issues. But yeah, sitting down now, I've got to describe what she looks like. And I want to use what the actress looked like. I want to go with, the actress was great. You want to but I want to what, create a new yeah. character. I'm so sorry, Shannon. You were great. So all that. But then, and then I got what genre do I do? Do I do in, in you know, she's got a, a, a personal assistant who is a romance writer. So when he's not watching whatever he's supposed to be doing, you know, stake outs and stuff, he's writing romance books. So do I, when I go back to his character, do I write it? You know, it yeah, so yeah. it's a... Uh, it is, it's very difficult to ship back and forth. And I, and I, would, I remember looking at scene descriptions um, and I remember looking thinking, okay, that's great because that, the camera sees everything. Yeah. So I just tell them where to put it and move on. Yeah. And now... I don't just tell them where to put it, but I have to tell. I have to describe everything that the lens sees, and yeah. and I'm I'm a literary snob. I have to write everything in third person, because my my oh. college English teacher lives in the back of my brain, and she's <laughs> annoying. Um, and so trying to write all of that exposition and description from the bird's eye view yeah. is a a challenge when yeah. you when you have done the screenplay. So I can see where that yeah. really, really with that. That's our shut up card. It means we have That's been okay. gabbing too long. So I will listen begrudgingly, but I will thank willingly our partners and our friends at Something Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and the Funnies, Krypton Radio, Off the Chain Radio with Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, and our great friends here at iHeart Books and the Florida Writers Association. We're so grateful that we were able to come in and talk to these great authors today. Remember everybody, subscribe. Come back again and again and again, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.